Welcome back, folks. Uh, Sport Federation TV. We keep talking sport in the Western Cape across the six districts. Of course, um, uh, as you know, according to the municipal boundaries. Um, and uh, uh, you, you would, of course, notice over the last few weeks, we've we've managed to talk about shooting on a number of occasions. And of course, the shooting structure in South Africa has multiple codes. Now, uh, one of the codes, or let's say the code that we're going to focus on today, is called Bisley shooting. Uh, first time for us. Well. I think been in the studio with us before, but uh, on the line with me now is uh, Jakub van Tonde, the vice chairperson of uh, Bisley Shooting in uh, Cape Town in Western Province. Uh, Jakub, uh, welcome to Sport Federation TV. Nice to have you here. Thanks, JP, and uh, hi to everybody out there. All right, uh, Jakub, um, uh, you're going to have to educate me a little bit. Bisley Shooting, it's got this strange name. You know, when we look at sport codes and the names and we things like we hear things like practical shooting and target shooting, uh, black powder shooting, it sort of explains the, 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 the code. Bisley, though, give us a rundown. What is Bisley shooting? <laughs> yeah, the, the name itself actually hails from a town in the United Kingdom. So people don't realize this, but globally, uh, Bisley shooting is... Um, one of the, if not the oldest codes of competitive sport shooting that exists. It had its origins in the town of Bisley in the United Kingdom in the late 1800s. And again, as with a lot of the military codes or the, 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 the sport shooting codes, the origins have a bit of a military connection. Back then at the end of the 1800s, the British were really worried about the um, ability of their, of their shooters generally in, in the army to be able to shoot accurately over longer distances. I think obviously the, 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 the wars in South Africa and other parts of the world had something to do with them identifying that as a, as a weakness for their own military. And so they started the competition in the late 1800s. Um, and that really was the start of competitive long range shooting uh, kind of globally. And the original code has morphed uh, over the last 100 years um, as technology has advanced and as people uh, wanted to shoot busily uh, in terms of the rules, but with different types of rifle setups and, and different hardware. Uh, and so the rules kept pace with all of this technological change. And, yeah. and so fast forward 100 years, we get to busily shooting still being shot pretty much according to the same original rules in terms of targets, how the scoring works and everything else, as it was shot the first time in the late 1800s. So just for me to make sure that I understand this correctly. Firstly, it, it is a, a rifle. It's not something that you're shooting Correct. over a 10 dis meter distance or something like the, that we see in the Olympics. It's, it's a long distance, something, a target very far away. Correct. So the shortest distance that we shoot is 300 meters. Um, and the longest distance is 900, and we actually shoot a number of distances in, in between. So we typically shoot 300, 500, 600, 700, 800, and 900 meters. We shoot at targets that are mounted in frames, and the frames can be moved up and down. So every shot after you have shot as a shooter, the target is pulled down. There's someone in the butts uh, behind a safety barrier, which then scores your uh, shot for you and shows you where the shot is. They push the target back up again, and you get immediate feedback as to where that shot went. So they are, before I get in, in, into the, the events that are coming up here, but the obvious question for me here is, I mean, if I heard you correctly, you, you said that you, you're shooting targets that are up to 900 meters away. Um, and yeah. the, the, I mean, yes, we understand that, that the weather would be a factor, but the obvious question that I've got is, how on earth do you see a target that's 900 meters away? Yeah, so you, you, you use, uh, we use high power optics in various ways. Um, so even, even though some of the subclasses, the rifles don't have any uh, telescopic optics that, that enable you to see over a distance, they are really some of the old disciplines that hail from the late 1800s where you still shoot with what we call a peep sight, you know, two mechanical rings, and you have better have very good eyesight so that you can keep those rings centered on the target 900 meters away. But for you to be able to see where your shot went, people yeah. use a spotting scope or some type of uh, telescopic device that's next to them, and they can then see what's going on on the target. So, so you're lying on the ground. Do you have your telescope or scope? Is it is it a separate device? Is it next to you, or is it attached to your rifle? 
Um, both. Depends both. on the discipline. Some of the disciplines, there are scopes on top of the rifle, so you're using the same optical device to aim and to see where the shot went. So the other disciplines, what we call the peep sight disciplines, uh, you are not allowed to use an optic on your yeah. on your rifle, so you use mechanical sights, and so then you've got a separate optical device next to you. Obviously, a lot of attention around this, maybe on a global level, after we see all these movies that come out on TV, uh, movies like Sniper and a few others, where clearly um, in those cases there the 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 hero is able to shoot. Um, at more than a mile, um, and, and so on, and we've 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 seen quite a lot of um, call it attention for this type of detail in shooting, where you talk about things like the wind and the weather and the temperature and humidity having an effect on on shooting um, uh, uh, like this, which which I suppose we can get into movie selection on on another day. Um, but busy shooting, then um, uh, you've got some events coming up um, here in. In, in the Cape Town area. Um, your first one then, uh, the Western Province Championships. Yeah, so we, we host um, annually on our calendar. Uh, uh, there is a Western Province Championships that typically is held, uh, depending on the weather and how the holidays fall and the school holidays in September or October of every year. We shoot it out um, at the Atlantis Military Range. Um, and it's an annual event. Um, and it's kind of used as a build-up. It's the premier event for shooters in the Western Cape. Uh, before the, we had COVID, we, would, we used to get a strong field of uh, competitors from upcountry who would travel down uh, that we normally aimed for the uh, school holidays. So you would get people from Johannesburg and the Eastern Cape and even as far afield as KZN. How do us. you practice for this event? I mean, you've got the, the provincial championships. You've also got the SA Champs camp coming up. But how do you practice for this? I mean, you can't go pull out your rifle and go and train in your backyard. Um, you clearly need facilities with extreme distance. Yes. So, so, so we are lucky in, in South Africa that we um, actually have a number of ranges. Uh, historically, we've had a number of military ranges uh, that have had excess capacity. In other words, the, the usage level of the military of the range is at such a level in the police that they, that they tend to have the range available over weekends. Right. Uh, and so we work quite closely with the military uh, and we have an arrangement that we are able to get range orders under military supervision. Uh, on most Saturdays, as a matter of fact. So um, so we are able to run uh, events most Saturdays. Typically, we would have events three out of four weeks, and then we have one week where we skip, and then another three weeks. So there's ample opportunity over the weekend to practice. Um, you've got the SA Champs coming up, but obviously we want to know how are our busy shootings in the Western Cape doing? You've got the best of the best coming around from, um, in fact, you've got at, at the Open Championships as well, but you've got the best of the best from the country coming to participate. How are our Western Cape athletes doing in Bisbee? Are we able to beat the rest of the country? So yeah, we, we so so we can actually. I mean, we can start at the at the international level. So so Bisley Shooting is an international uh, affiliated body. So we even have a pro tier team that shoots um, every four years in the World Championship cycle, and and competes against other countries. And and South Africa is typically um, in the top three countries in the world. Number in the top three to four, we've. Actually, yourself the, being one of those, you're a, you're a pro tier F class discipline shooter yourself. I am indeed, and we have won the world championship once before. We've wow. medaled a number of times subsequent to that. So South Africa is um, is is very well represented in the international shooting uh, sports codes, especially around Bisley. We do really well. The Western Cape um, is one of the strong provinces, together with Gauteng, when it comes to kind of local regional pockets of strength. Um, and so the Western Province shooters definitely do exceptionally well. And there's a saying that we've got in the Western Cape <clears throat> that we don't easily allow an outsider to take our Western <laughs> Province Open Championship medal. And, uh, and we, we are going to put up a good fight to make sure that the Cup stays in the Western Province this year as well. That's incredible. We're finding out more and more good stories every day in the world of sport. So uh, what you're telling us is fantastic, fantastic facilities, well organized, great events, um, athletes coming through the ranks and competing at a national level and winning world championships. Yaku, fantastic chatting with you. We'll leave it at that. We, of course, wish you guys the best of luck for the um, Bisley Open Champs that's happening on the 31st of September. And then, of course, the SA Champs happening on the 17th of October. Yeah. 
Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, JP. There we go, folks. Um, Jaco van Tonde, the vice chairperson in the Western Province, Bisley. And um, a great for us to find out more and more at every opportunity. Bisley uh, shooters in the Western Cape competing at a national level, going on so far uh, as, as South Africa uh, or representing and winning world championships. Great stuff. Folks, we'll take an ad break. When we come back from break, we'll carry on talking about sport in the province. Back in a sec.